Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMedVince.com and in this video today I'm going to show you how you can fix a toilet that just keeps on flushing. So that will just keep on going now. Now I've worked out a way to stop it, it's just by simply whacking the buttons a few times and then it will shut off and it will fill up again. The problem is that I can't keep doing this because it's irritating and also when other people come to visit flush the toilet and then it just keeps on filling and I'm on a water meter here so obviously that's going to start costing me money so I need to solve this problem. Now to begin with we need to turn off the water supply into the toilet. So have a look around and you might see that the pipe feeding the toilet has a valve like this or it might be one that you need to put a screwdriver in and just twist to turn it off. Unfortunately on this toilet it's not going to be easy because it's all sealed so there is no obvious valve obviously it's hidden underneath there somewhere and I'm not going to turn this into a big job where I want to remove this from the wall because it's all been nicely sealed and stuff. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the water coming into the property, so the main stopcock, because I know by the speed that this fills up that it's running off the mains. If it's running very, very slowly when it fills up, then it's probably from the tank up in the attic. But this one fills within a few seconds, so I know it's off the main. So I'm just going to go and do that now. Okay, so I've turned off the water. Now with this one here, it will just lift up. Some of them you have to unscrew in order to get them up. But with this one, you can see that it's just gonna lift up. But don't just yank it out because you can see that it is attached via this tube here. So I'm just gonna use this little thing here just to push in to release this from the top. There we go, so you can see that that just fits in like that. And I'm just gonna put this to one side. Now, I'm not overly happy with this. This is a bodge job here. You can see that that's just some plastic pipe and that's a cover for a radiator. So that's not great, but saying that, it does work. So I'm just gonna put this safely down to one side. What happens here is when you push the lever down, it pushes this in and then it flushes the toilet like so. So I'm just gonna empty that down there now just to let the water out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna twist this and lift this off out of it. So normally with these, you can just give them like a, about an eighth off a turn round and then it will lift off. It might be kind of scaled up. It depends if you live in a, a hard water area or not. But if I twist that now, there you go. You can hear that click and you can see now I can lift that up there. So this is the thing that's causing me problems because every time I flush it, this goes up and it lets the water rush past it and this should drop down again. But it's not dropping down, it's staying in the up position so the water's constantly rushing past it and then I have to press the button again and then it drops back down and makes the seal against this bottom bit here. So first of all, what you need to do is just rub your hand around here, make sure that there's no debris or anything that's uh, blocking it because just in case some bit of plaster's come off and fallen into it or if there's any you know lime scale built up in one particular bit it might have dropped off and then blocked it there because it doesn't take much on my toilet it was really gushing through but if you've just got a trickle that's constantly going through it could just be because this has got some debris on or it could be because you see this little rubber seal here this might be damaged and you can easily replace this that's not a problem undo the screw and you can buy these the thing is i don't want to get too involved in this because i can actually buy these i've checked them out i can actually buy these very cheaply $8.99 from Tool Station in the UK. I can buy this and it also comes with the top bit as well so I don't have to put up with the rubbish that I've already got on my one. So rather than getting involved with changing this or spend ages cleaning this out because I do live in a hard water area and this has probably got quite a bit of scale inside, I'm just going to replace the unit as a whole because by the time I clean it and change this I might as well spend $8.99 and then I can get a nice new pusher and the mechanism underneath as well. Right, okay, so I've got myself another one now. Now obviously this is very bad for landfill because you could just replace that washer at the bottom here and you're probably gonna be okay. But the main reason is, is that I wanted a new one of these and by the time I buy the rubber washer and the button here, then realistically I'm gonna be spending up on 8.99 anyway. So that, that's the thing, it's this bit here that I'm not happy with. Right, okay, so. We've got our replacement one, and it is exactly the same make as before, because this toilet here is not very old. You can see here, it says MACD, and I've got the same model numbers down the bottom. You won't be able to make it out in there, but they're the same, they're exactly the same. So all I'm gonna do is, I don't need the rest of this, I'm just gonna use the bit that's faulty. So again, I'm just gonna twist and take out. And you can see how it works here, because we've got a little lug, here 
and here, that fits into there and there. So when we put it back on, we just need to line up those lugs and then twist and it's back in place again. Okay, so this is the part we're gonna be using. Right, so I'm looking down now, I can see that I've got the points here that I need to line up, here and here, and I want this yellow tube to be at the front of the toilet, just like it was before. So I need to line up these bits here. So I'm gonna put it in this way round, yeah? Not that way round, because it's gonna be round the back. I'm gonna do it exactly the same as it was before. So we're in there like that, and now turn. And that is now locked into place. And now we're gonna get this and fix it to the lid. Right, so I've got the system lid here now. And we're gonna push this through from the top and we need to decide which way we want it. I think I'm gonna have it that way, nice and straight. And then we're gonna put that bit on there and this will tighten it up. Okay, I'm not gonna go too tight because I don't wanna crack anything. There you go, that feels nice. And I'm happy with that, it kinda of looks level. And now I'm just gonna get this bit here and put it in here. Just press the button, put it in, and let go. And now that is nice and securely into place, just like that. Okay, and now all I need to do is pop that back on, go turn the water on, and hopefully it'll be all working again. Okay, so the water's back on now. Let's give it a go. Excellent. I'm just going to give it a few more goes just to make sure. Yep. There we go, I'm happy with that. Now on these things here, there's also levels as well. So for example, you can adjust them to allow the amount of water to go through. They've got like floats built in. You've got another one here. So I've just left my one as default. So as it came out of the factory, I've just put it straight in. And as you can see, it's working fine. What you can do is you can copy what you've already got because if your toilet was working fine, apart from obviously this thing that was broken, then you can just copy the one that you've taken out. But what you normally find is that in a lot of cases, just by leaving it as you bought it, will work absolutely fine. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it and please subscribe for more how-to videos. Take care, bye now.